Um, just to introduce myself to everyone, my name is Jeremy Fioravanti. I'm the president pro tem of the Delaware County Institute of Science. Our institute has been exist in existence since 1833 as a society, and we're housed in uh, beautiful media, Pennsylvania, in our new building that was built in 1867, which I'm constantly wrestling with <laughs> all of the uh, nuances of, of old uh, buildings. But I'm very excited to have this event this evening. It's our third type of digital uh, engagement with our membership and the broader public to satisfy our mission to diffuse knowledge to the public. What's even more exciting is there's a potential to move from education to action on very important issues that are facing not only our country as well as the globe um, in terms of what we're trying to understand and grapple with. So I just wanted to thank uh, Matt, uh, Matt Scott uh, with Project Drawdown and Laura Gurdon and Dan King for uh, facilitating and encouraging um, this event this evening. So thank you very much to everyone. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Laura Gurton, and I'm a volunteer with Delaware County Institute of Science. I'm your technology host for the, for the evening. And I'm also a professor of earth science at Penn State Brandywine. And for this new series with Delaware County Institute of Science, we're calling Drawdown DCIS. Uh, it is being supported by the Sustainovation team at Penn State Brandywine. And as you've probably seen the schedule on our website, each month we're going to be looking at a different sector of climate solutions within Project Drawdown. But we thought what would be important is if we start first with an overview of what is Drawdown and climate solutions. And, and I'm really excited that we have Matt Scott joining us this evening. Matt Scott is from Project Drawdown. So he is a manager of storytelling and engagement. Such an incredible title and if you look at uh, his background you'll certainly see that he has an incredible career in as a digital storyteller uh, he went to george washington U university in washington dc with degrees in marketing and business administration and what we're going to be doing tonight is a little different than the dcis lecture series what we're going to do is have matt start us off he'll be presenting and you are all encouraged to put your questions in the Q&A box. So please do click on Q&A, post your questions in there. After Matt gets done presenting, Matt and I will have just a short discussion, just kind of wrapping up some of the things that he spoke about. And then we will go to the Q&A to address the questions that you have uh, come up with. In the chat is where we will be posting announcements and links to everyone. We wanted to keep the, the chat clear of the questions because there's so much rich information about uh, what's going on with Drawdown and the resources that we know Matt is going to mention. So, uh, so we want to keep the chat clear where we can forward on additional links to everyone, uh, which we'll be doing throughout the this evening. And then uh, We'll get to that Q and A and get to as many as your questions as we can. So, what I'd like to do is just take a step back and then hand the virtual mic over to Matt. All right. Thank you so much, Laura, and thank you, Jeremiah, for for this introduction and for getting us started. And um, thank you, everyone, for having me. It's so great to be here. As Laura mentioned, I'm based in. Uh, Washington DC and she gave a little bit of my backgrounds but uh, just as an overview I am the manager of storytelling and engagement at Project Drawdown which really means that the focus of my work primarily is on how we could humanize the climate solutions that we are talking about at Project Drawdown. So in this talk today I will talk about what Project Drawdown is and also, I think more importantly, what you can do to help this global community reach the point of drawdown. So just as we start out, I want to ask a question and I'm, I'm hoping that you would answer in the chat with your responses. And that question is, what comes to mind when you think of global warming and climate change? I would love if you could put your responses to that question in the chat and it's okay if it's just a word, just a couple of words. What comes to mind when you think of global warming and climate change? Great, I'll give everyone a couple more seconds to put some responses in the chat and I see them coming in now. Um, so 
Great concern is one response. Species extinction, catastrophe, unraveling, inequality, crazy weather patterns, helplessness, science, hurricanes, risk, loss of ice caps, fall of the Garden of Eden. There are so many different answers. Continue to put those in the chat. Um, you know, it's it's so powerful to to see these and. You know, to be honest, I asked this question at the start of different talks, and it never, it never, um, just uh, it it doesn't cease to to shock me how, um, you know, all of these things, the risk, the ice caps, all of the thing, the negatives that come out of uh, climate change and global warming are things that come to mind for me too. So thank you so much for sharing those. Um, what I'll say is that 14,000 people actually were asked this same exact question in a study, what comes to mind when you think of global warming and climate change. And believe it or not, 44% of people said basically responses that are very similar to what we saw in the chat, talking about the melting ice caps, talking about the changing weather, talking about just some of the catastrophe that we're going to see. What we also saw is that 18% of people talked about the causes of climate change. So really thinking about the burning fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas. But the surprising thing, or maybe not so surprising thing, is that only 3% of people respond to that question with climate solutions, which I think is notable because if you responded with something that wasn't focused on climate solutions, that is absolutely okay, because you are definitely in the majority. But um, this, this points out that uh, our work at Project Drawdown is so critical in order to surface climate solutions. Uh, Project Drawdown is the world's leading resource for climate solutions. And in this talk, I'll talk more about the work that we do. I won't get too much into the specific climate solutions. Um, there's a lot more about those on our website, drawdown.org. But what I will get into is, again, actions you can take that really help build more awareness for climate solutions. If there's one thing that I would say just at the start, and I mentioned this on a, on a live event that we had take place earlier this week, that really when it comes to anything, not just climate solutions and implementing them, that you can't be what you can't see. And so one of my goals in my work as a storyteller is to help people see climate solutions in action in their communities. It's to help people see people like them who are taking action in their communities to, to really work against climate change and global warming and reach this point of drawdown. Again, if you have questions as we go along, feel free to put them in the chat or take note of them because we will have time for those later on. Again, as I mentioned, it is so easy to feel powerless in the face of all that we're seeing, all that we're seeing when it comes to global warming and climate change. But the beautiful thing is that at Project Drawdown, we know that stopping global warming is possible with solutions that exist today. The climate solutions that we've researched at Project Drawdown are not theoretical. They all exist, um, and there are about 100 of them. And these are all things that are uh, just in need of implementation and support, and uh, they're in need of more and more people adopting the solutions and implementing them in their communities. But you might be asking yourself, what is this funny word drawdown that I keep mentioning? So to start out, just to give background, drawdown is the future point in time when levels of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere otherwise known as heat trapping gases like co2 for instance is one that that comes up a lot um, or carbon dioxide in other words um, it, drawdown is the point when those greenhouse gases those heat trapping gases stop climbing and start to decline so that little blue dot that you see toward the right of the screen is the moment of drawdown and that's really what we're working to achieve because right now we are on a path toward that um, that light colored line that goes right off the top of the screen we're seeing these gases increase in the atmosphere and the work that we're doing is really focused on 
stopping that, reaching that point of drawdown so that um, not only will our planet heal and not continue to suffer, but also future generations um, and, and realistically, even you know, my generation will have a planet to live on. So just as more background on Project Drawdown, we were founded in 2014, and in 2017, you might have heard of the best-selling book, Drawdown. Some of you might, might have um, read this book, um, but that is the, the thing that really put Drawdown on the map, I would say, in 2017. And then in 2020, just last year, we, we released the Drawdown Review, um, and the first edition of the Drawdown Review, which essentially just provided updates to the research and information and solutions within the Drawdown book. The Drawdown Review, which is actually available for free on our website, drawdown.org, has research and insights when it comes to climate solutions. But the other thing that's really powerful, I think, when it comes to the Drawdown Review is that it's not simply about the research. The Drawdown Review really includes human faces and some human stories and perspectives, putting the research into perspective. And what I'll say is that, you know, in comparison to the work that I'm doing at Project Drawdown, which just began um, in November this past year, um, the Drawdown Review only scratches the surface in terms of the stories that we want to tell. But ultimately, all of the stories we want to tell, and again, all of these pictures are of real climate solutionists in communities all around the world, um, the stories are of real people making a difference and using climate solutions to do that. So I'll start out just by giving an overview of what some of the different solutions are. Right now, you'll see the start of the drawdown framework for climate solutions. There are actually nine different areas or categories for climate solutions. I mentioned that there are about 100 solutions that we've actually researched, but there are nine areas that those are categorized into. So there are solutions that reduce sources, or in other words, these solutions are focused on reaching zero emissions as quickly, as safely, as equitably as possible. Um, and the, the solutions that help reduce those sources of emissions are electricity solutions, um, food, agriculture, and land use solutions, industry solutions, transportation solutions and building solutions. So when you're looking at this, those, those circles within the bigger boxes are actually just some of the subcategories of solutions. So for instance, when it comes to food, agriculture, and land use, you'll see the address waste and diets uh, category. But within that, there are a number of different specific climate solutions that you could choose. Uh, for instance, uh, having a plant-based diet is one of them. But again, there are a lot of different individual solutions within this. The second thing we want to do, in addition to reducing sources of emissions, is actually support sinks. And what sinks are is that sinks essentially are pulling some of those um, of those greenhouse gases, the carbon dioxide specifically out of the atmosphere and supporting and enhancing the sinks of carbon dioxide found in nature. So um, some of those sinks are uh, fall into these three categories. Land sinks, which include some of the more specific categories listed here, coastal and ocean sinks, and engineered sinks. Um, I, as a storyteller, will say that um, I often don't get into the specific science of, of these, but the good news is that there are a lot of resources from Project Drawdown, which I'll talk about later, that dive a lot deeper into the science and could give a more thorough explanation of these different solution areas and the specific solutions. So I mentioned reducing sources. I mentioned supporting sinks. The third area of climate solutions is to improve society. One thing that we, we know at Project Drawdown and um, in the research that we've done is that 
indirectly when we are supporting education, for instance, girls education, which isn't necessarily as equitable uh, for girls and women uh, all around the world, is that we are um, improving people's agency and by improving people's agency and ability to advocate for themselves to push for change, we are indirectly um, presenting a, a climate solution. So I will click over to this slide, which shows you an overview of the different solution areas. Again, the nine areas are electricity, food, agriculture, and land use, industry, transportation, buildings, land sinks, coastal and ocean sinks, engineered sinks, and health and education, or some of those more society-focused solutions. Um, so ultimately, what we need to reach drawdown is for people all over the world to implement these different uh, solutions that fall within these categories in different ways. And I'm happy to talk more later uh, just about specifically uh, what what solutions you all might want to do and, and how you could think about um, coming up with the solutions that you want to focus on. But ultimately, I think the key beyond the specific solutions, because they're all important, they all will make an impact, they all will help us reach drawdown, is to know that it takes intention, it takes care, it takes courage to build movements in ways that move solutions forward, in ways that help heal the planet, that help heal um, systemic injustices rather than deepen those. And so we have this opportunity to, one, create awareness of solutions, but also shift attitudes and um, increase climate action so that we can reach this point of drawdown and so that we can have this world to live in for generations to come. In Project Drawdown, we talk a lot about this person who I'm sure a lot of you as uh, Pennsylvanians, I'm not sure if that is the, the term, but a lot of you might recognize this man, Mr. Rogers. Um, actually, I think people all over the world would probably recognize Mr. Rogers because he is one of the most impactful educators of all time, has reached tens of millions of people over about 30 years, really teaching communities and, and kids, but all of us about neighborhoods that we live in and the importance of the people who live in those neighborhoods. One reason that we talk a lot about Mr. Rogers now is because he's a reminder that everyone has a role to play. There are different roles that people play and we all will bring different skills to the table when it comes to implementing climate solutions. But really all of, all of the work that we do is important. Um, sometimes the work that we're going to do is going to be focused on actually implementing climate solutions. But one thing I want to stress before getting into some of the things that you can do in addition to implementing climate solutions is that implementing climate solutions directly is only one way to make an impact. And it's only one way to, to drive change. Actually at Project Drawdown, we talk about these seven accelerators of change. So I talked about the solutions, but in order to, to be forwarded and implemented and make an impact, the climate solutions that, that we have in this world, again, about 100 solutions that Project Drawdown has researched, need to be paired and, and supported by these different what we call accelerators. And essentially these accelerators are just things that we need to do that could help uh, forward solutions and again, reach the point of drawdown. And just to read those out loud, um, they are shaping culture. Um, so by shaping culture, we could forward climate solutions. By building power in people, especially people, um, I think of, of women in particular and gender equality in this sense, because um, women often in, in a lot of countries don't necessarily have the power to implement solutions. And yet a lot of the research has shown that women are 
uh, the big source of so many different solutions. Um, women are a big source of a lot of societal progress. So we need to build power. We need to set goals and know what we're driving toward. We need to think about how we could alter rules and policy. That's critical to think about the role that that policy plays in all of this. We need to make sure that people who are implementing climate solutions um, have funding and resources to implement them. So that's where shift in capital comes in. We need to change behavior so that people understand the role that their individual actions play in um, contributing to, to, well, to the issues that we are seeing today and also change behavior so that people could see their role in being part of the solution. And finally, we need to improve technology which ultimately will help forward a number of solutions. But what I wanna talk about now is ways that you could get involved, things that you could do to make an impact. And the first one I'll mention is actually a new series that we launched just last week called Climate Solutions 101. And that's available at the link that you see there, drawdown.org slash climate hyphen solutions hyphen 101. So for those who are wondering, Climate Solutions 101 is the world's first major educational effort in the climate space focused solely on solutions. And it goes back to that question that I started with because as mentioned, out of 14,000 people surveyed in that study, only 3% responded speaking about solutions. You all know, even in your responses, that uh, when we think of climate change and global warming, often, uh, often the, the risks and fears and outcomes are the first thing that comes to mind and not solutions. And so Climate Solutions 101 is a free resource. It's available on the Project Drawdown website. Again, drawdown.org slash climate dash solutions dash 101. And again, it includes science-based educational resources hope to hopefully drive public discourse. And it's also a resource that you could potentially use to share climate solutions with your friends, with your community, with others you know. And so, in Climate Solutions 101, there are these six units um, or six videos, essentially. Um, but it's each unit is more than just a video alone. There's actually more to it than that. This is a screenshot, actually, of the part of the page, part of the website page for Unit 2, which is about stopping climate change. And you can see just a little bit of an overview of the lecture is listed there. But when you go to that website I mentioned, and when you scroll down, you'll see that on each of these unit pages, they're actually paired with expert interviews. So for Climate Solutions 101, our executive director at Project Drawdown, Dr. Jonathan Foley, who you'll see there in the top right, um, actually interviewed all 10 of the, the other folks on this panel, essentially, one by one about different topics. So. Um, for instance, uh, John interviewed Dr. Leah Stokes about business and the role of jobs and um, just some of those, those concerns that often come up when we talk about climate change and climate solutions. Um, he interviewed Ryan Allard, who is in the top row about transportation. And so if you really want to go deep on a topic, um, these videos are really helpful for an insightful conversation from John with his background in science and academia, but also each of these experts and their backgrounds. And there's more information on the website when you click on each of these folks about who they are and what their backgrounds are. In addition, on each of the on each of the unit pages, there are these key graphics linked. So if there's if there's one thing I could stress uh, when it comes to climate solutions 101, in addition to you just watching the unit videos, watching the expert videos, um, it's that this is really all meant to be shared. So I hope that over the course of the rest of this year, really, as you're going through the different solutions, that each of you actually visit these pages and 
take a look at what these different graphics are. Each of these graphics is um, featured in the videos that John presents each of the unit videos and they're downloadable, they're free, you don't need to even enter an email address or anything to do that. So um, if you want to use these and circulate them to talk about um, certain topics when it comes to climate change and global warming, um, you could do that. And you could watch John's videos to get a better idea of the best ways to do that. The best ways to talk about these graphics, I should say. In addition, I'll just mention the last thing for Climate Solutions 101 that on that website page um, listed at the bottom of the slide, um, there is actually a form that encourages people to sign up. And it's not required, but essentially the purpose of the form is for us to ask this question that you'll see at toward the top right of the screen. How are you planning to use Climate Solutions 101 and with whom? Um, this is our way of just understanding who's engaging with the series and also to provide updates, to provide opportunities to get more resources and information uh, to support you um, sharing this series with other folks. And so I'd also encourage you when you go to this website um, to sign up for updates and we'll be sending updates about um, every month, at least uh, through this year as educators get ready to integrate Climate Solutions 101 into their courses for the fall. And as other groups, uh, whether it's corporations, um, acad uh, I mentioned academia, but uh, faith-based groups and community organizations, uh, they we want to know how they're using this series so that we could better support um, that. This is also a great way to give feedback on what other resources you'd like to see from Project Drawdown. But now that was a lot about Climate Solutions 101, we are very excited about Climate Solutions 101, especially because we just launched it. But I want to talk about the Drawdown Eco Challenge, which I am very excited to, to know that you all will be engaging with the Drawdown Eco Challenge. Um, if you want to learn more about the Eco Challenge, well, I'm sure that Laura will share more about that as we go along, including today. But um, you can also go to drawdown.ecochallenge.org. Uh, drawdown, um, drawdown Eco Challenge is really an opportunity to connect the dots between your values and what you care about and the actions that you want to take or the actions that you can take to make an impact when it comes to reaching that point of drawdown. The biggest question that I get is what can people do? What action should people take? And Drawdown Eco Challenge is actually a response to that question because it gives people the opportunity to learn more about specific issues or specific actions they could take to form teams and to start to, in this virtual platform, um, gain points by uh, taking climate actions and actually making an impact. So just to start out on the um, Drawdown Eco Challenge, it's it's a fun social way to take measurable action. And as you can see here, um, Five, more than 5,000, actually nearly 6,000 people are currently signed up and participating in the Drawdown Eco Challenge. One of the things I want to point to actually is that for Earth Month or April, in other words, Eco Challenge is hosting this uh, special Earth Month Eco Challenge, fittingly named, and there's more information about that at earthmonth.ecochallenge.org. Um, but the beautiful thing about the Eco Challenge, uh, whether we're talking about the general drawdown Eco Challenge, which you could engage with any time out of the year and which I know you'll engage with throughout the year, um, or when it comes to this Earth Month Eco Challenge is that what the website does really well is that 
it presents these solution areas. So I mentioned food, agriculture, and land use, for instance. And in addition to that, it also presents these specific actions or these specific opportunities for you to take action. So you'll see, for instance, there are daily actions listed here. There are one-time actions listed here. And you, as part of a team within the Eco Challenge, can choose to to take one of those actions in order to, again, make, make an impact uh, when it comes to these solutions. And so I will show on the next slide just what that looks like when you click a little bit deeper that let's say um, you want to work on zero waste cooking. And so if you click on the learn more button, I'll click back just to show what that whole interface looks like. If you go ahead and click on the learn more button, there are actually a lot of resources to help support your journey. So here are screenshots of just a few of them. One is actually a page featuring the research on the Drawdown website, the, re the reduced food waste research. Another is an external article from the Academy of Culinary Nutrition in this case. Another is a YouTube video that shows how to not waste your extra vegetable parts and reduce food waste in that sense. So you don't need background on these issues in order to be part of the eco challenge and in order to, to take climate action because all of that information is included, or at least some of that information, some of the context is included uh, with each of the actions that's listed here again. So the next thing I'll say is that when you hit that button to join a team, um, it actually gives you the option to either create your own team or to join a team. And again, Laura will speak more to how you all will be engaging with Eco Challenge specifically, but this is what that interface looks like. And you'll also notice that when you're on the Eco Challenge website, just to show you a little bit more of what is there, um, it's possible to search through teams. So you could see on the left hand side that there are 842 teams. I believe that's this, uh, that number of teams is specifically for the Earth Month Eco Challenge, um, not for the general Eco Challenge overall. Um, so you could search for the list of teams. You could request to join a team if you're not already planning to join with the team. But again, Laura will share more about how you should engage with Eco Challenge. And this, I'm sure, will be a, a very guided collaborative process with this incredible group. The other thing I'll mention is that on the right hand side, small actions add up to real change. That's one thing that's so true when it comes to climate solutions. But you'll see that when you engage with the Eco Challenge, that there, there's actually a point system that you get that just reflects um, the ways that you're engaging. So you get five points for joining a team. You get 15 points for creating your own team. Uh, but if you go down a little bit further, you'll see that you get five points for completing one daily climate action. You, uh, If you complete more than one daily action, you get another five points. Um, so it's powerful um, as uh, this, the Eco Challenge is a powerful way to, I'd say, gamify or, you know, really make the process of engaging with climate solutions a fun one. So again, you could learn more about the Eco Challenge at drawdown.ecochallenge.org. But I've mentioned more about the, um, I've talked about the uh, Climate Solutions 101 series. I've talked about Eco Challenge. The third thing that you can do to really make an impact when it comes to climate solutions, I would say, and it's really straightforward, is to go to drawdown.org. On drawdown.org, we have a number of resources. As you already saw, we have Climate Solutions 101 there. We also have the Drawdown Review, which is available as, again, a free resource with updated information on the solutions. And again, that was published in 2020, just a year ago. So that's uh, the, the most recent compilation of uh, research and data on the, the solutions that we have. Um, 
ultimately, what I think um, is most important is not, you know, exactly what you do, but that you do something, that you take some kind of action when it comes to um, this, this work and when it comes to climate solutions. Maybe you have a skill that's really fit for implementing a specific climate solution in your community. And again, the Drawdown website's a good place to explore specific solutions. But you also, maybe maybe your skill set is more in storytelling and in reaching communities. So sharing climate solutions 101 might be the path that you want to take. If you're interested in, in I'd say dipping your toes into action with a group. Well, Eco Challenge is a great way to do that. And again, Laura will talk about that. And overall, I would say, you know, while while um, I can't do the science justice, the Drawdown website has the Drawdown review and a lot more information on the science. So my big question, and something for you all to think about, is what will be your next step? Um, that's really up to you, and I'm, I'm excited to hear more after this talk just about ways that you're engaging, and I know that you all have a lot planned going forward, so I'm looking forward to, to seeing all that you do as just this Delaware County um, Institute of Science co community. But before concluding, I actually want to come back to the question that I started with one more time. And I want to see if uh, what your responses are now. So again, I would love if you could post your response in the chat. What comes to mind when you think of global warming and climate change? Let's see. I have my fingers crossed and I am pulling up the chat. So again, what comes to mind when you think of global warming and climate change? LEDs, renewable energy. We're seeing some of those solutions come in, or some of those some of those responses come in. And um, again, what I think is powerful when we do this work and when I get, do the work that I do is that it's really focused on showing people what's possible. It's focused on showing people that climate change and global warming aren't something that we have to be a victim to. We all have powers, we all have things that we could do to make an impact and drive change forward. And you know whether it's reducing food waste, like mentioned here, regenerative agriculture, which is another one from, from Jane, who's clearly uh, done some research, it's that you, know, you all have the power to make a difference and to make an impact at different levels to different degrees. And again, I'm very excited to see the ways that you do that. Um, each and every person has the potential to be a problem solver, to be a change agent, to make a difference, even when we feel small, when we feel insignificant, when we feel like there's not a lot of time, when we feel like this challenge is insurmountable. There's a lot that we can do and a lot of opportunity for us to, to get to draw down, to, to get to that place where our planet will be here for generations to come. But I will say, that if you want to learn more about Drawdown, I've mentioned it many times, but you could go to drawdown.org. Um, and now I will actually stop sharing my screen as we get to questions and I will turn back to Laura for, um, for more. Thank you so much, Matt. This has been uh, just incredible for you to be able to set this framework for us and to help us as we're moving forward um, as an organization, as individuals, as members of other communities, not just here in Delaware County, but elsewhere, um, and talking about uh, what's going on and what solutions we can have as well. And I just wanted to share my screen and just show a, a couple of uh, websites to everyone. And again, please get your questions into the Q&A and we'll get those queued up and ready for Matt. I will just mention on a side note uh, for 
uh, you might see a, a random name answering some of your questions <laughs> if you see Dan King. Uh, Dr. King is a marine and atmospheric chemist at Drexel University, so uh, he has a background in some of this information, so don't worry, Matt, we are leaving some of the questions for you, but the ones that are uh, more technical, he's taking on some of those uh, as well. well. Let me go ahead and, and share my screen um, with everyone. I just wanted to show a couple websites, and Matt, you've probably seen these. Um, Right. As well. So the uh, Yale University has a program that is the Yale Climate Change Communication Program, and they have what are called the Yale Climate Opinion Maps. And I think some of this is what's driven me, not just as an educator, uh, but in looking at what's going on nationally. I mean, we hear newscasts or getting our news feeds off of social media. Uh, but if we look at some of the data that Yale has collected from surveying over half half a million people across the US. Uh, you can see the map is broken down by states and by counties, down to the county level as well. And when you look at the number of adults who think global warming is happening, 72%, that's the nationwide average. That, so it's not that it's, it's a very few people that think it's happening or very, uh, it, it's, it's a pretty sizable amount. And on this map, which I'll show everyone uh, the link for this too, because we actually put it on our website, I can select Pennsylvania and it can zoom right up for us. And you can hover over Delaware County, here we are. Um, nation average is 72%, for us it's 78%. Uh, so we are um, in the majority here, we're above the nationwide average for what's happening. But I love this other list of questions too. And again, these are opinion maps of, of where people fall with uh, everything from renewable energy uh, to global warming. Here's the key, and I think this is what's really driven why we're doing this series, um, and it drives me as an educator too. So at the top, the estimated percentage of adults who discuss global warming, at least occasionally, now we're down to 35%. And if you look at us here in Delco, we're, we're at that average, um, 35%. Um, if I zoomed out where we could see the entire US, oh, it's not gonna do it that way, so national. You, you see a lot of blue, right? So there's a lot of blue that's there. Um, we go down to the county level. It's just across the United States. So, so global warming is there, it's on our radar, but we're not talking about it. And, and this is why I think Matt has a position with Project Drawdown. Project Drawdown realizes we need people to be talking about this, to be telling these stories. And if you uh, went to our page, uh, again, we have a site, the Drawdown DCIS website. We have a page, this overview page, which is going to stay there. This is always going to be available for you with these links. Uh, we'll remove the, the Zoom link, though. This Again, this lecture is being recorded. So uh, once we have this done, I will email everyone that's in attendance today and let you know when the video is posted. If there's any video on this page you get a chance to watch, please watch this first one by Dr. Catherine Hayhoe. Uh, because what she, what she talks about, this is her TED talk, the most important thing we can do to fight, fight climate change is to talk about it. And you don't need to be the PhD scientist that's talking about it. Just having these conversations, breaking down that climate anxiety, the fear, the doom and gloom. Matt has given us so many suggestions of resources and places we can look. And, and I thought it was very clever too. I don't know if Matt did this intentionally, but one of the things Dr. Hayhoe talks about is figuring out who your audience is and what do you have in common with them? How can you connect with them? Mm -hmm. And Matt brought up Mr. Rogers, right? Here we are in Pennsylvania. <laughs> he brought in a, a Pennsylvania icon for us during this, right? So it's about knowing who your audience is and how to connect with them. So again, uh, these videos, and if you wanna know specifically about the state of Pennsylvania, there's a podcast series we're gonna re uh, refer to each month. Uh, that is specifically looking at drawdown solutions taking place within the state of Pennsylvania. This was a project done by a project drawdown uh, REU scholar, a research experience for undergraduate student that interviewed people across the, the state of Pennsylvania to say, what are we doing in Pennsylvania? So the uh, Pennsylvania Drawdown podcast is definitely one I encourage you uh, to listen to. And then here at the bottom is as Matt was mentioning, the Drawdown Eco Challenge. And so what we've done is we've actually uh, connected with the, draw, the Drawdown Eco Challenge, and we have available to us, not just for the month of April, but for the rest of the calendar year. Because each month we are actually gonna be looking at a different 
drawdown solution or a different sector within there. And so each month we're going to be asking everyone to look at a particular area of drawdown eco challenge and and just try to some of those activities, some of those suggestions and implement them. So for example, healing and renewal is actually the category we're going to be working on for our first month. And Again, here's the website for Drawdown Eco Challenge. On this page is where you can get the link to go to the DCIS team page and sign up. But even if you don't want to sign up, I understand a lot of people aren't eager to just get on the internet and, and be a part of the team, but you can still look at these actions and activities. So here we are, the healing and renewal. And I thought this was a really important one for us to start with, uh, because if we don't take care of ourselves, it's going to be really hard for us to take care of planet Earth. Right. So we need to start with ourselves. And so when you look in here, these are some of the challenges, right? Tending a garden, eating mindfully, planting trees, or just going for a walk, eating more fruits and veggies, or you can create your own challenge too. And it, you can do this on your own separate from the website, or if you uh, register with the website, you just click and you, you sign in and you say you, com you completed that activity. And then there's points. We like competitions too, right? Sometimes competitions are what motivate us to participate. But the weather is getting so warm and beautiful here in Pennsylvania. Uh, go for a bike ride, exploring more in the areas. Wow, this is such a great time for us to get out, do some self-care, so then we can come and, and really take care of some of the needs that we see here on planet Earth. So I will stop my sharing with that. But again, um, that the website we have for this lecture series is open and available for you as well. And Matt, are you ready to answer some questions? I know we've got some in here. Yeah, I'm very ready. All right, I don't know if you could see in the Q&A, the first one there, what is the role of Project Drawdown organization taking to reduce uh, greenhouse gases? Is it purely educational or is it working in other ways? No, so actually the educational component of the work that we do at Project Drawdown is, it's something that, that did truly start with the book in 2017 and continued with the Drawdown Review in, in um in 2020 just last year but really project drawdown at its core it started as a research organization research is a huge part of what we do so we have teams of researchers that we've worked with to to research just different areas i mentioned the different solution areas and um what my role is is more of that educational piece more of that storytelling um i again just joined project drawdown a handful of months ago and our, our com our communications team um is brand new to to project drawdown so we had um a couple of folks who were doing the work before um just a few months ago but um, yeah, we're, we're big on the science, big on the research that will always come first. But in addition to that, we do want to make sure that we're you know, sharing the research and sharing the solutions with people. Um, so yes, it's, it's also educational to that question. And um, one thing I want to clarify is that we are not implementing climate solutions ourselves. What we do is, again, we work with a team of researchers who could determine what solutions are feasible and and what solutions to embrace and then um then we're we're educating people about that and spreading the word about those um so i hope that that answers your question and and matt i believe the the data that project drawdown works with is available online as well right it, it is where, where if you wanted to access it and if you have talents using uh programming languages like r or python mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you can actually really get hands-on with this information um and 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 look at the same data that project drawdown is and and work on those solutions so i really appreciate that that all your work is also open source and available um, for the scientists that really want to get their hands into it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'll also say that one thing that I like about the Drawdown Eco Challenge and just the even the Earth Month Eco Challenge is that um, it links to the specific solutions that are relevant. And then under those solutions, there is more research and, and more that you could find there. If there's something that like if there's data that you you aren't able to find when you are on the drawdown site and looking at solutions, you could also just uh, contact us over the contact form and our re our research team is able to uh, share more 
specific data and information. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure um, if every single thing that they they go through is on the website just because the researchers work so hard and there is a lot that they cover but i would really say that um that's a good place to start to go to drawdown.org and um to to start to look at the solutions great thank you for that and we have a another q a um mm -hmm. Can Project Drawdown offer ways local groups can come together to support each other in making these lifestyle changes? And it, and you gave us certainly some frameworks and templates right. that are out there. Do you know of other groups that have come together? Do you have any examples maybe that of other groups you've heard of or can share about maybe some models that have worked for others? Yeah, so there. So the first thing I'll say, and I'll actually put this in the chat, um, is that I am posting this um, this form. What I just put in the chat is the classroom and community initiative that uh, that I'm facilitating for Climate Solutions 101. And to your point, David, um, can Project Rodden offer ways local groups can come together? We are definitely constantly in the process of creating more resources for people who come together um, and or more resources more resources for people to come together, I should say. Um, and so if you fill out that form short, you'll get more information on Climate Solutions 101 itself. But the other thing is that you'll also be able to let us know if there are specific types of resources that you would like. And anyone could fill out that form and let us know the types of resources that would be most helpful and useful. Um, we're really looking to you and the community to let us know what would be useful. Um, for instance, we don't currently have a community, um, a yeah, a community in the traditional sense for Climate Solutions 101. But if that's something that people want, that might be something that we create to help people um, get more tips and information on how to convene groups and how to support each other. Most of our information is about the science and research and solutions. Um, and so, um, yeah, we, we really want to hear from you with some of these suggestions. The other thing I will say is that there are so many great organizations that are convening folks um, but one organization i'll point to and i am going to link to them in the chat is uh, an organization i love called climate advocacy lab and just a couple months ago actually in pennsylvania in pits in the pittsburgh area uh virtually we did a zoom session with the carnegie museum's a crisp team, CRSP team, and we actually collaborated with the Climate Advocacy Lab, which is all about um, teaching people how to tell their climate stories. So I would really encourage you to sign up for the Climate Advocacy Lab or to check out their resources. And uh, yeah, I will echo the sentiment in the chat. Hooray, Pittsburgh. Thank you, Pittsburgh. Uh, I'll, I'll just mention quickly that um, as project drawdown we are going to be doing a lot more in the pittsburgh area this year and um i'm looking forward to being in touch more with you incredible uh climate solutionists in in the pennsylvania area not just in delaware county but beyond so thank you and by the way i i see one more question just about where we can download this data and again drawdown.org is a great place to search and start there is there's so many different um, resources now especially with climate solutions 101 that are listed there and matt in our uh, registration forms mm -hmm. uh for people registering for this webinar yes. there was a couple uh comments and questions about where do we find these climate stories that we can tell? I mean, not just educators to use them in their classroom. Um, I know in the state of Georgia, I'm actually going to post the link here. Mm. The Georgia Climate Project has yes. actually created this interactive map where you can zoom right. into different places and, and read about stories of what's happening for climate solutions in Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any other suggestions of places to go where we could get some, some good climate stories to share? Actually, you you shared one that and maybe my number one uh, source to recommend. I actually just discovered a few weeks ago the Drawing Down in PA podcast, which you shared. And so that that was 
it's really interesting and powerful to see the things that people are doing on the local level to share climate solutions. And the thing I like about those pages on the Drawing Down in PA podcast, and I'm not I'm not sure of the best link to see all of this in one place, but I'm I'm sure you have it, Laura, is that there are the podcasts, but then under each of the podcasts, there are just different other resources. So some of them point to organizations that are doing work when it comes to climate solutions. A couple of weeks ago, I listened to the podcast episode that I think was focused on gender equality. And then um, on that page, it linked to at least one, if not more um, different, um, yeah, that's the website. So it linked to one, if not more uh, different organizations, I think women's organizations that were doing work that um, tied in with the climate solution of um, of improving society, which I mentioned at the end. But um, I, I'll also say, I don't know of one great one-stop shop for climate solution stories. And that's something that at Project Drawdown, we talk about a lot because um, there are things like the Drawing Down PA podcast where there are a handful of stories, but that is Pennsylvania specific. And there are all of these different regional stories. There's the Georgia Climate Project, um, and the Climate Stories Project there, and that's a great resource. And so um, I would say that I'm not, I don't know the best sources for local climate solutions, um, but I would really encourage you to just search for your region and search around your communities. One thing I would say um, for finding those stories and, and um, really just identifying organizations doing climate solutions work in your communities is that sometimes you just come across these things. So you might be reading the newspaper or you might be in a Facebook group where someone posts something. You might um, see a news story that comes up about the great work that someone's doing. Um, these stories are everywhere. And I think part of it's just knowing uh, to look out for climate stories that fall within the um, or I should say solution stories that fall within the, the nine solution areas I mentioned. Yes, it's, it is overwhelming that there are so many resources, but I think it's also beautiful because there are so many resources that you could almost, you could throw a stone and, and find a resource. And I think some of that is just about going, you know, going and, and searching and asking around in your community. If I could give a very simple way to find uh, solutions in your local area. And so one thing we're doing, we're going to keep this drawdown DCIS website and there's mm -hmm. one of the pages is called a resource page. And so Amazing. on there, we're putting uh, what well, we definitely credible, reliable sources, ones that um, I have vetted and I know that other scientists use. So we're making sure you have some reliable information because we know some people just need that step back and kind of a, a review, like a one-on-one -on -one primer on what is weather versus climate sometimes. And so mm -hmm. we're trying to put some of those materials and resources on there. We've got some great ArcGIS story maps if, if you're more into the visual storytelling as well uh, to get in there. So we're, we're, we don't want it to get too overwhelming, but gosh, there is such good stuff out th that's out there. Yeah. And then we also had someone on their registration form ask about, well, where can I get other articles and news sources? And we mm -hmm. have that on this page as well. Um, and yeah. in terms of podcasts too, so Drawing Down Pennsylvania. So full disclosure, Matt, that was my research student that created those. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, um, well, it's and, amazing. And, and what was wonderful is Anna had just finished her freshman year of college. And we haven't wow. talked about the role of youth in any of this, yeah. but I think it's so important for us to realize that uh, no matter what the age, there's yeah. there's interest across generations in being able to do something. And Anna, just having finished her freshman year, didn't feel like she had that science expertise, but mm -hmm. what could she do? She knew technology. She knew how to use Zoom to interview people. And, yeah. and she, she came up with this podcast series, which was wonderful. Um, yeah. And we listed a couple other podcast series on this, this resources page too, for people to check out. Great. And I'll, I also just want to mention, and and by the way, Laura, I'm, I, I'm not sure what uh, the timing is, but I'm happy to answer more questions. I'll just mention um, that one thing you were talking about storytelling and um, 
just in general, because I one question I get a lot is about how to reach different communities when it comes to this work, especially when it comes to communities that might not be on board or might question the work that you're doing. And I just wanted to say that um, overall, I have some very simple tips when it comes to how to tell the story to people, whether it's people who agree with you, um, people who don't agree with you. Um, the three tips I have are number one, just to remember that um, these are real people that you're talking with. And, and something that we do a lot at Project Drawdown is we focus on sharing stories of real people, people like the people we're talking with. So in the example of the workshop that we gave a couple of months ago in the, I keep saying in the Pittsburgh area, but in Zoom for folks in the Pittsburgh area was that we shared examples from, um, from well, some examples from the local area or at least examples that are relevant to folks in the local area just from the, conversations we had. So number one, sharing stories is so powerful for helping people see and understand that these solutions are real and implemented by people like them. The other thing that I would say, which I think a lot of you are probably already thinking about is to appeal to what the audience cares about. So maybe it's not the planet or climate change. And honestly, um, climate change isn't a priority for a lot of people just because they don't necessarily know the urgency or priority um, in their lives. A lot of people are more focused on, you know, what am I going to have for dinner tonight? And how, you know, what am I doing for work, especially in this pandemic, um, than they are on the planet. But I think when you focus on the fact that when it comes to climate solutions, there are so many jobs and opportunities to grow our economy. Um, you know, you could focus on that aspect if that's what someone cares about. You could focus on benefits, uh, the benefits of the planet and building a better world for kids. You could, you could talk about so many different aspects of this work. So I'd say the second thing is to focus on what they care about. And then the third thing I'd mention is just to leverage the influence of everyday people that those audiences listen to. So if you have someone who you who doesn't want to listen to you, well, there's probably someone that they'll listen to. Um, that might be uh, a, their child, that might be their spouse, that might be a friend. And if you're able to convince some of those people within their networks, well, then you could really activate those people that they listen to, to be allies, to speak to um, their friends about why this work matters. So I just wanted to mention all of that and hopefully it's helpful for folks, but there are again, um, resources like the Climate Advocacy Lab and, and others that you could also turn to for more tips on storytelling. Great. Matt, I can't thank you enough for no, you. joining us this evening and uh, helping us come together as a community to start discussing these and addressing these issues and and this continues we will be continuing next month and this is where we're going to start going into some more specifics uh we are going to be bringing the director of the energy engineering program from penn state and we are going to be bringing uh, one of the managers from philadelphia energy authority uh, to both speak with us in april i put the link in the chat if you wanted to go ahead and, and register for that and then of course uh, on that page you'll see the recordings if you want to watch them ahead of time. One of them is from Climate Solutions 101 that Matt, again, that just went live eight days ago, nine eight. days ago. Yeah, nine days ago. <laughs> so literally hot off the YouTube press. Right. <laughs> we're, and uh, so we're excited we're going to be able to tap into some of those resources too as we, as we have our next round of speakers. Um, Again, I, I want to thank you, Matt. I want to thank everyone that came tonight. Uh, please do reach out if you have any questions. Uh, oh, that I can answer for you, certainly. Um, and perhaps Matt might be able to help us out if we have anything. And Matt, we'll definitely follow up with you and let you know how our journey goes. Hopefully we will have an amazing story that we can tell you uh, by the end of this program on, on what we've done and uh, how we've been in doing our own climate solutions here in Delaware County and in the, in the region. So Jeremiah, I will turn it back over to you. 
Just thank you so much again, Matt, for coming this evening. I've already signed up. I've, I've committed to planting five trees, one of which is already done. Spring's a, a great time to plant trees. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to share all these links. Just thanks again. And I look forward to seeing everybody at the end of next month for our next Drawdown Series uh, online lecture. Have a good evening, everyone.